Welcome to part three of how to do everything with the Tractor Control S4. And now I'm gonna talk about my absolute favorite feature in Tractor, and that is Beat Jump. So in the vinyl era, when we mix tracks, we basically would drop on the one and then we would have to just kind of wait for the song to come in or we would have to memorize our record inside out to know when the bass kicked in or things like this or the vocal came in. But now with Tractor, we got this beat jump feature that will allow us to jump by a certain number of beats that we choose and it will jump seamlessly without skipping a beat. So now we can remix our tracks live and have the power to play our songs exactly the way we want to play them and come in and come out exactly the way we want them to or even extend outros and things like that. So here are the tools that we have to beat jump on the S4. So first of all, we have the loop knob. So with the loop knob, I can turn it to select the number of beats that I want to beat jump by. Since I play a lot of techno and house music, I like using 32 beats, and that is eight bars, because a lot of dance music is made in eight bar phrases. But maybe if you're playing dubstep or EDM or uh, hip hop, you might want to use lower values so you don't jump so far on your track. So I select the number of beats with the loop knob, and then I can use the move knob to jump forwards or backwards by that number of beats. And you can see as I turn the loop knob, it's jumping 32 beats at a time. So essentially, as long as I drop on the one, I can use this beat jump feature and I can jump ahead but keep the two songs in phrase. So this song, the song PQM, You Are Sleeping, Matador Live Mix, the vocals don't come in for a little while on the track. So let's say I just wanna start the song and I wanna jump right to the vocal. Let's do that. Here I just jump right to the point where the vocal was and everything's still lined up perfectly in phrase. Right, if I wanted to go back, I'd extend that section. Jump back. Baseline swap. Right, and if I wanted to get to the end of this song, I could just beat jump to the end. Just like that. Now, another way you can use beat jump is let's say uh, I'm queuing up my track and you know I'm trying to drop on the one, but I messed up and I accidentally started the song a beat late. What do I have to do? Do I have to restart the track? No. With beat jump, I can actually jump a beat forwards or backwards to correct that error that I made. So just do that. Okay, so the snares are on the the one and the three, like everything's all messed up. I can just change the beat jump amount to one beat and just jump back. So this can help solve phrase mixing problems as well. All right, so let's talk about another feature that I love in Tractor and that I use quite a bit, and that's called deck duplicating, also known as automatic doubles. Going to DJ history, DJs used to have to buy two copies of the same record, and they would use those two copies of the record to extend the break, the danceable section of a song. Also, you have beat jugglers who would have the same record, but like they would delay the record by half a beat or a sixteenth note, and they'd do these like you know these kind of beat juggle things uh, with the same song. 
And now I'm gonna show you how I use deck duplicating to skip breakdowns of the song. So sometimes you're in the zone in the mix, you have your dance floor at your fingertips, but you see this long breakdown in the waveform and you're like, oh no, I'm gonna lose the energy, what do I do? You know, maybe I don't have hot cues set in my track, so I can't like just jump to a section of a song. So I use deck duplicating. So there's two ways to duplicate a deck. Uh, the first way is to load the same song onto both decks. So if I load this Victor Calderon onto deck B, you can see how it's loaded the same song at the same position and the same speed, right? So I have a duplicate on deck B. You see this long breakdown kind of towards the end of the track here. So as I approach this, you know, I can either load the same song and it just duplicates it, or I can reach over to the computer, click the deck header, and then just drag it over to the other deck. And now we have copies. Now we can use our friend the beat jump to just skip right over this breakdown and mix this song in like it's a second track. just skipped over that long breakdown, nobody knows anything happened. You know, so once again, click, drag, beat jump. You can even EQ. And then we just went back to the beginning of the song. Uh, so great tool to skip breakdowns or just kind of jump around the song seamlessly. Now the other way that I can use uh, deck duplicating is like the turntablist method. So if I, let's just load a song here, a beat, electro beat here. So one thing turntablists will do is they'll have two copies and they'll just kind of scratch the record so it's delayed by a certain beat, fraction of a beat. So I can actually do that with our friend beat jump. So let's put our beat jump to an eighth note here and do a little deck duplicating beat juggling action. Copy. Jump. Put it to a quarter note. And if I ever forget where I am in the beat, click and drag again. And we're back to baseline. and that's deck duplicating. Macro effects are very experimental effects. And a macro is basically means that you're doing two things with let's say one button or one knob. Uh, so all of the macro effects are a combination of different effects. So if I click this drop down menu here, you can see down here at the bottom, we have some effects that are labeled M, M for macro, and we have all these effects now I don't know exactly what these do. You can go in the manual if you really wanna know exactly what these do, but just, they're just crazy. Let's give a couple examples. First, we have the bass o -matic. So the macro effects do one thing if you turn them to the left, and one thing if you do them to the right. So that bass o -matic effect is a buffer-based effect. Let's just try a couple more. We have granuphase. light test. So you can hear how crazy you can get with the macro effects. Try them out, see which ones stick for you, and just get weird with them. 
All right, so we talked about how group effects are chain from left to right. We talked about the gator, which produces a white noise, a kind of a hissy sound. So now I have a pop quiz for all of you. Can you tell me which 90s dance song that this is the intro to? It's a dance music song. Let me know if you know it in the comments below. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about one of the most popular features in Tractor, and that's called hot cues. So going back to turntablism and beat juggling, DJs used to have on their vinyl records, they used to put stickers on the records so that they can drop the needle on the record and the needle would just slip right into the groove of the beat, right? They'd have the records all stickered up. Now in the digital world, we can use what are called hot cues to mark certain sections of the song. And these hot cues can either be used just to visually tell you, here's the verse, here's the chorus, the breakdown, the drop, intro, outro, things like that. Or the hot cues can be used to mark sections of the song that you can trigger, such as maybe the kick, the snare, a cool vocal sample. So I'm gonna show you how to set hot cues, how to delete them, and how to remap them. So let's get into it. All right, so I have this David Morales song loaded up, and I'm gonna first set some cue points in my track just to mark certain sections like the verse and the chorus, things like that. So first to set hot cues, I'm gonna click on the hot cues button to put the pad mode in hot cues mode. Now we have eight pads down below here where we can set our hot cues. So I always like to set my first hot cue on the first kick drum of the song. And now I'm just gonna go through here and just mark different sections of the song. And I'm also gonna use my beat jump to do that much faster. Okay, so I just made a mistake. I didn't want to put that hot cue there. So I can delete that hot cue just by holding the shift button and pushing the pad that I want to delete. And now we have an unlit pad and I can get back to work. So we got the verse. And now let's do the outro. Maybe this little tail right here at the very end. All right, cool, so now I have eight hot cues set in my track. Now, before I start playing with these hot cues, first I'm gonna turn on a mode, it's called quantize mode. So quantize mode will make sure that when I trigger any of these hot cues, that it waits for the next downbeat to jump to that hot cue, so that I can confidently trigger these hot cues live without worrying about going off beat. This is especially helpful if I have two or more songs playing since I don't have to worry about train wrecking. All right, so let's do a little live remix of this David Morales.
right to the verse. Right, so you get the idea here. I can use the hot cues to jump to certain sections of the song uh, while keeping the phrasing and keeping the beat. Now let's load up another song here. Let's load up the brand new song from Sharam called All Night Bong, just out on Yoshitoshi. Check it out. So I'm gonna go to the beginning here. Let's just zoom in here and I'm gonna show you something. So I'm zoomed in right now on that first kick drum. I set a hot cue here. Let's play around with it. So you hear how when I trigger the hot cue, there's like some space. I didn't set it right on the B. And you can even see in the software here that the hot cue is not snapped to this first beat. So let's delete that. Now I'm gonna engage a mode called snap mode. So if I hold shift and push the quant snap button, that's gonna turn on snap mode. So snap mode, when that's engaged, it's gonna snap any hot cues or cue points to the nearest beat in the song. This will make sure that any hot cue that I set is perfectly on the beat. So now you can see that my, my playhead is not on that kick drum. I'm gonna set a cue point and you can see how it moved it to the nearest beat. vocal sample. Okay, so that's how to set hot cues. Now, what I'm usually doing is I have kind of a system with hot cues. So hot cues are kind of like my roadmap for a song. And I usually stick to a system. For example, hot cue one is usually the first kick drum of the song. Hot cue two is when the bass line comes in. Hot cue three is when a vocal sample comes in. And then maybe hot cue four through six are free form, they can be anything. Hot cue seven's always my uh, fade out marker or my point of the song where I would mix in the next song. And I'll get into what hot cue eight is in a minute. But now that I have a few cue points, I can just kind of quickly drum them out, right, and have some fun with them. So now I'm just gonna go finish the song and set a few more hot cues, maybe on some parts that don't have kick and bass. On the breakdown. Drop. Yeah. And now that I've set those hot cues, I can just kind of jam out. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about some different kinds of cue points that we have in Tractor at our disposal. One of my favorite ones are called load markers. A load marker is a special kind of cue point that when I load the song, it's gonna just jump right to that cue point, saving us the time of scrolling and finding that cue point manually. So we can just jump right to that point of the song. So I'm gonna load this Fabio Florido song here. And you can see that this song has kind of a long intro here. And you know, if I was mixing this song into another song, I'd have to just do this until I get to the first kick drum, right? So I'm just gonna go right up to this kick drum here. I'm gonna set a hot cue. And then I'm gonna change the hot cue type. So I can do that in the cue panel. If you don't see the cue panel, first I can show the advanced panel either by clicking this arrow underneath the tempo fader and then click on cue to go to the cue panel 
or select a layout up here that has the QPanel showing, such as extended maybe. All right, so now I'm in the QPanel. So here's the cue point that I just set. It's a hot cue. And I'm gonna change the cue point type in this drop down menu. So if I select the drop down menu, I can select load. Okay, so now I have a load marker set. Now watch what happens the next time I load simplexity into a deck. So here I go, I'm loading it. Boom, it loads right to that cue point and I can just start right on the kick drum without any delay. So some DJs even set load markers for all of their tracks just to speed up their workflow and just get right to the beat that they want to start on and start. Notice how right now I have a grid marker and a load marker. Let's say I want to put this load marker on hot Q1, but I don't want to delete my grid marker. Never delete the grid marker. So what am I supposed to do here? I can actually use the map feature in the Q panel and I can actually change the order of the Q points. So I'm gonna click on the number two here, then click map, and then click on the number one. Now it's moved the load marker to hot Q1. It didn't delete the grid marker, it's still there. It's just not mapped to one of the eight triggerable hot cues. Now another great kind of hot cue that a lot of people don't know about. They're called fade in and fade out markers. Now these markers, if you have a fade out marker and a fade in marker in both songs that are loaded, as soon as this song reaches the fade out marker, it's gonna automatically start the playback of the other song at the fade in marker. So let's get into how that works. So I'm gonna set a hot cue here right on the first beat after the last breakdown. Then I'm gonna to go to this drop down menu here and choose fade out. And we have this orange hot cue. And then on the next song that I want to prepare, I'm gonna to go to the first kick drum. I'm gonna set a hot cue there just by clicking on one of the hot cue slots. And I'm gonna make that a fade in marker. Let's prove my theory. So what's supposed to happen here is as soon as this song reaches the fade out marker, it's gonna start this song automatically. Look, mom, no hands. So fade in and fade out markers, your automatic ghost DJ. If you just set fade out markers in all your tracks and you don't have fade in markers, nothing's gonna happen when it gets to the fade out markers. So I actually use just fade out markers as a different colored hot cue to mark where I wanna mix out songs. Definitely check those out and see how they can be useful for your own DJ workflow. And just a note, if I set hot cues in my tracks, the next time I load that track into a deck, those hot cues will show up so it's saved to my collection. All right, so now let's talk about a fan favorite in Tractor, and that is loops. So what is a loop? A loop is a piece of audio that repeats over and over again. You can use it to extend parts of a song, do crazy buildups in a song, or just use it to remix your songs in creative ways. So let's just get into everything looping. So we have a few tools on the S4 to set loops, save loops, delete them, edit them. So the main one is the loop encoder. So I can use the loop encoder to make the loop bigger or smaller, and then when I push it down, it's gonna set a loop. I also have the move encoder here, which I can use to move my loops around. All right, so now let's set a loop. So I have this David Morales track loaded into deck A, and I have snap mode on now. So I'm gonna play the song, and when it gets to the first kick drum, I'm gonna push the loop encoder to set a 16-beat loop. Now you can see that the waveform is green, showing me where the loop is in my track. Also, the waveform on the controller is green, and the loop icon on the display is lit up green, showing me that we have a loop. If I wanted to, I could even move the loop. So if I use the move encoder while I have a loop going, you can see that it's moving the loop forwards and backwards. 
by the number of beats that's shown on the display. Okay, cool, I like that loop, let's save it. I can save a loop just by pushing an unlit pad, and now we have this loop saved to hot cue number seven, which I can easily trigger. And when I trigger it, you're gonna notice that it jumps to that just like a hot cue, and it also turns the active button on. So if there's a loop going, this active button will turn on. More on that later. Now let's go to the Sharam track here and let's find a section of the song that we want to loop. Okay, so I have a loop going. When it gets to the end, it's just gonna repeat. Now, if I wanted to, I can do a loop build up here where I just cut the loop in half and half and half, just like this. And I just push the loop encoder to let the song play out. All right, so let's go back here, save a loop. Now we got a 16 beat loop, I'll save that. So now if I wanted to, I could just kind of, I could play these songs together and play both loops at the same time. And if I wanted to, I could move this loop on the fly. Right? So loops can be great. You know, you could save a loop at the intro, the outro, or another great thing I like to do with loops is I like to find an instrumental part of the song that just sounds great when it repeats over and over and I'll save a loop there. So especially for songs with a lot of vocal content in them, I can find a section where there's maybe no vocals in this little loop section and just put a loop there. And then if I have a song that has vocals in it, I can slide that in there underneath. So now I'm gonna talk about a pro DJ technique that artists like Dubfire, Nicole Mudaber, Chris Liebing, Richie Houghton use. So artists like Dubfire and Nicole Mudaber save loops at the end of the tracks as sort of a safety method for one, so the song doesn't end and they also save them so they can keep the energy going of a track. So when you have multiple tracks playing and one of them comes to an end, the energy drops. Whereas if you have a saved loop, you can keep multiple loops going and it keeps the percussive energy going. And another great thing that these are good for are bathroom breaks. So let's say the bathroom is at the other end of the club and I'm DJing and I don't want the music to stop. I can activate a stored loop at the end of the song. So when the song gets to the end, it's just gonna repeat over and over. I can go to the bathroom, come back, the song's still looping. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go to the end here and I'm just gonna save a loop at the end of this song. Just like that, I've saved a loop. To activate the save loop, all I need to do while the song is playing is turn the active button on. So I can do that on the controller by holding shift and pushing move, and that turns the active button on. Now as soon as this song comes to the end, it's gonna automatically keep looping, and I can start bringing in the other track. All right, so now we've talked about how to set hot cues and how to set loops. Now I'm gonna introduce you into a more advanced transport technique called flux mode. So flux mode, also known as slip mode or loop rolls, it's a transport technique that allows you to interact with tractor's transport controls and you can jump to hot cues and loops without losing the phrasing of your tracks. 
So basically, we have a second playhead that's gonna play underneath, and while I'm triggering hot cues or loops, the playhead's gonna continue forward, and as soon as I release the hot cue or loop, the deck is gonna just jump to that position in the track as if I had never done that transport action. It's much easier to explain by just showing you how it's done. So let's do that. So I'm gonna play a track here, and I'm going to enable flux mode by pushing the FLX button right above the jog wheel. So now we have flux mode enabled, and I'm gonna play this track here and then I'm gonna start setting some loops. So there's a few really cool things you can do with flux mode. First is gonna be loop rolls. So loop rolls are like quick, like drum roll style loops that you can do. And you're gonna notice when I set the loop, the playhead's gonna continue underneath. And then when I release the loop encoder, it's just gonna to jump to that point in the track. Let's check it out. Right, so you can hear how this can become a nice performance technique that you can add into your sets to give them more variation. Or if you're a drummer like me, you can have some fun just doing quick drum fills to spice up your mix a little bit. So another way that you can use flux mode is triggering hot cues. So you can almost use flux mode as a hot cue sampler in a way. So while the deck is playing, I have some cue points set. You remember these cue points from the last lesson? and I can trigger them, and while I'm holding down the button, it will play that hot cue, and as soon as I release that hot cue button, it will jump back to the point in the track that I was in. Right, so you can hear I was triggering that cue point that has the vocal sample. I was triggering the, the buildup in the breakdown. So you can do all kinds of cool things using hot cues with flux mode. Now another one of my favorite tricks, uh, and this has always been sort of like a voodoo trick. People are like, how do you do that? It's doing flux mode backspins. So while the deck is playing, I can do a backspin, and as soon as I stop the backspin, the deck will continue playing to the point as if I never did a backspin. The cool part of this is if I'm playing two decks or even more decks, I could be in the middle of a multi-deck mix and do a backspin and then kick it back in and it just jumps right onto beat, right in sync, uh, blowing people's minds. So here's how it's done. So the way to do it is you do a backspin, and my trick is I give a little nudge in the side of the jog wheel when I'm done. You can even do little scratches. That's flux mode, baby. So flux mode, it's just another tool in your arsenal to remix your tracks live, give your set more variations, doing loop rolls, hot cue triggering, backspins that keep your track perfectly on the beat. So just a note, if you do flux mode backspins, you wanna make sure that you're in jog mode on the S4, because uh, if you're in turntable mode, it won't jump back to the point where you are. All right, so now I'm gonna turn flux mode off. Now I'm gonna show you reverse mode. So the reverse button is just living right next to the flux button up above the jog wheels. And this will allow you to play the deck temporarily in reverse. So I'm gonna play the track and I'm gonna hit the reverse button and you're gonna notice that when I hit reverse, it also turns flux mode on temporarily while you're doing a reverse.
and that's reverse mode. Just another tool in our arsenal to keep our crowd on our toes and add some spice to your sets. All right, I know that was a lot of information to process. Did you think you knew everything about the Tractor Control S4? Well, think again, because we're about to blast off into some more advanced tractor features. So keep it locked. Mm -hmm.